What a time of year. All this abundance around us. Okay, so I thought I'd do a little August walking tour of the homestead. This is probably gonna make you feel a bit better about your plot and potentially when I look back at it, made me feel a little bit worse because things have definitely got away from me. June turned out to be a really, really busy month for me um, work-wise and I just let things slip and then you know what it's like, it's really hard to get back on top of it. But there's lots of stuff being good. The roses were beautiful when they were in flower. Got some lovely apples about the place. This is Liberty, I need to prune this one actually. So I've got a lot of summer pruning of my apples to do. They say you should do it August. I haven't got around to it yet. So all of these cordon apple trees down here, they need pruning quite rapidly really so that the fruit can ripen. There's loads of fruit on the trees. Uh, you know, this one's Sunset, um, Gala. I've got just, there's just lots and lots of different ones down there. The greenhouses have been really good. I've managed to keep semi on top of them, although the bindweeds got away from me in this one a little bit. You'll see in here now, try not to swing it around too much. A lot of bindweed, but down there I've got one of those uh, mini cucumbers and they've been really brilliant. So yeah, so something like all the purple sprouting broccoli. I think I'm gonna, this winter, I'm gonna not worry too much about winter veg. I'm gonna re-fence some of it because the rabbits have been a nightmare. I've not grown any beans because of the rabbits. There's been quite a bit of trouble with that. And it was rabbit proof fenced. It probably just needs patching up. So I'm gonna try and do that and then hit it hard next year. That's what I always say. Um, there's, a, there's a running theme with my gardening. Uh, down here, we've got Glacier Tomato. These were my first ones ready. Really, really soft skins, indeterminate, so they kind of grow a bit messy, and they ripen really nice and slowly. And I've got three plants here, and they've kept us in tomatoes, you know, just the, the occasional tomato really, really well. So I think these Glacier Tomatoes are gonna become like a bit of a, a firm favorite with me. I'm gonna grow them every year, I reckon. Uh, I think they've, they've kind of earned their place. I really like these. They're given to me by a guy from Scotland. They've been superb. So, you know, if they're growing up in Scotland, it's fair, fair bet they grow well down here. And here we've got all my chili peppers and their big buckets. Stood in a tray of water at the moment, actually, just trying to give them a bit more moisture. Got some really nice looking ones. I can't remember what these ones are called. I got some cherry bomb ones, they need to go red, but they look quite yellow at the moment. Got some purple KNs, had one of those on my tea last night, really nice and hot actually. Wife did a stir fry, it was lovely. Uh, got some lemon drop, uh, more purple KNs, and I've got the Korean gacho kind of ones for making my own kimchi, is the plan. Got lots of stuff I should have planted out as well, which I haven't, but I've kept it alive in here because pff, that's what we all do, isn't it? I, I hate doing that, but like I'm terrible for keeping stuff in pots for the whole summer. I think I should plant it out, and it's like the guilt that lives with me all the time while I'm gardening. Uh, but never mind. The second greenhouse has been a massive success, although I've properly let things get a little bit away from me in here. So in here, we've got this exploding cucumber, which is related to Akachur. So I knew it was going to go mad, and yet I still put in four plants, and it has just covered the back here. Uh, it's gone absolutely mad. Got this cucumber here called Da. A bit disappointed because it didn't actually climb. So putting all this net in, it's not really climbed very far at all and you have to kind of dig around for the plant. So ideal if you've got like a small container or something, probably perfect for that, meant to be small cucumbers. They've actually been a little bit bitter. So we've had to peel them uh, to eat them, which is a bit of a pain, but they're actually really tasty when they're peeled. So it's a little bit more effort. It's not the end of the world. Here that you can see one of the exploding cucumbers. Spiky, looks quite aggressive, under tension. That's not gonna explode, it's, it's not ready. But when it does, it kind of flings it back. I'll do a video on it another time. They're really quite cool. Tastes just like an Akachoa. Not, not a bad taste, a little bit watery. Quite nice, really, I suppose. And I put in, so in this polytunnel, not the polytunnel, in this greenhouse, another mistake I probably made was amongst other stuff I put in these little tumbling tomatoes I got it from one of Hugh Edwards' books actually where he's like grow tumbling tomatoes onto your path well I can't walk on my path because I my path's probably too narrow for it but my goodness have these produced some sort of cherry tomatoes this year it's been 
superb. Like we're coming here, we're picking a colander, probably picking a kilo a day at the moment of these cherry tomatoes. They're only tiny plants, they're not very tall, like a foot tall, tumble down, full of little red cherry tomatoes, really sweet, called Cherry Falls. I think it's an F1, so I can't say for seed, but really, really lovely. And it's meant to, there's, there, is, there is some, oh, there is some peppers in here, sweet peppers, it's called Flynn. So I'm gonna grow these for seed saving, ideally. So we've got these as sweet, kind of snacking peppers, as they call them. Got some lettuce gone to seed, got some lamb's tongue in there as well, also gone to seed. And there's meant to be some aubergines down here. The aubergines haven't done very well because I think they got overtaken by the tomatoes. And I think tomatoes are just a bit more vigorous than aubergines, which is a shame. Or eggplants if you're in America. In the actual veg garden, so I have kind of, I've drawn a line under it and I've kind of stopped. Um, at the moment because I want to do what I said. But I've got the potatoes here ready to harvest. They are ready to be dug up. I've also got potatoes here nearly ready to be dug up. So they were planted a few weeks later. I've got sweet corn looking pretty good actually. I haven't pollinated any myself so we'll see how well it does. It's not really a block, it is more of a line and sometimes, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how well it does. Down here we've got five courgette plants which is potentially too many but actually we've been keeping up with them this year and what I've just done now as you can see here I've been pollinating so I take off a male flower like that open up the stamen and then you don't watch as the plant you, you do its business you pollinate it so you know it's pure so hopefully I have some courgette seed to take to the seed swap in February next year this this yellow cucumber Courgette has been really, really tasty. So it's just slightly sweeter, I don't know. Really good one. I can't remember what it's, Burpees Golden, I think it's called. Loads of beetroot, ready to eat. Got some winter squash there, ready to, well, hopefully it's got some fruit on it, but it just hasn't done very well this year. Kind of got a really slow start. My parsnips are doing really well. I'm gonna have a good crop of parsnips. My carrots never came to anything, got eaten off. Um, Got my outdoor tomatoes, and they are just starting to ripen. So, okay, it's middle of August. We're gonna get a reasonable crop of them. I'm not gonna let them get any taller now, so I'm just gonna put their energy into producing fruit on these. So this is Prima Bella, which is said to taste tastier outside. So we can, we can see about that. And then I've got another one here, which is the Sutton's one. I've got Crimson Crush here, which is, it's blight resistant. It's an F1. It's, it's not the tastiest tomato. I had the seeds, so I thought I'd put them in. It just hasn't quite got it in taste-wise, but it is quite a reliable cropping tomato, great for cooking with and things like that. Uh, so if I was gonna grow a few tomatoes, I don't think I'd put it up there, but because I grow so many, I feel like it's fine to have it as well. So I've got four plants of Crimson Crush there outside. And I don't normally grow outside tomatoes, but it's, they seem to have done all right, actually, despite, despite all the rain. Um, down here we've got some lettuce going to seed, so I can seed save from those. Got a Peruvian ground apple there, the Yakon, doing really well. I honestly didn't think they were gonna come up. So I'm hoping they can put on the, well, I'd say doing really well, they should be up here by now. Uh, they're alive is what I mean. So I'm just hoping they can grow a bit more. Got some more winter squash there. So I'm, they went in a bit earlier than the others, as you can tell, and they're going a bit wild now, starting to climb over everything. So I'm hoping we get a decent crop of those. We really use our winter squash a rot, especially with diabetic daughter. It just makes it uh, like low carb teas a lot better, especially if it's all homegrown. Here we've got some peas, which I've they were great. Uh, I think they're called Golden Acre, Monge 2. Really, really lovely pea. They're going to seed now, and I'm gonna save the seed again for the seed swap. Some more yakon. Weeds, weeds, beetroots. I've got lots of beetroot down the bottom here where I was going to put in my raised beds. And I think I might have even said that in my last tour, that I was going to start building my raised beds, but I didn't get around to it. So it's going to be a winter project. Still got the wood up there. It doesn't matter. Uh, so what I did was just chuck a load of winter squash down here, because you know what they're like. Just go mad, cover everything, do a bit of weed suppression. Uh, so I'm hoping they'll be all right. You can hear all the tractors around there. They're harvesting the wheat over there now. Down here is still a mess. So the aim is to get this tidied up for next year. Got my old greenhouse, I just chucked it down here. Me and the kids carried it down. And I'd like to set this up. I've got some sleepers actually in my trailer over there. Want to put it on sleepers, just do an easy one. Maybe just have it for strawberries or something like that so we can have a nice early crop of strawberries. Never very good at growing strawberries. 
Now the polytunnel for me has been a bit of a disappointment because uh, I haven't kept on top of it so it's my own fault. So this side's great, got the tomatoes down this side and it's been really good. This side not so great, got some cucumbers and a few bits of others and I've left my tables and stuff. The bindweed has come, come into the polytunnel and it's gone mad so I need to try and get on top of that this winter. But the tomatoes have been great down here, doing loads and loads of seed saving so I can give away my seeds. The kids said to me, one of my kids said to me the other day, she said, what's your favourite bit of tomato, Dad? And I said, oh, probably the middle bit. And she goes, hmm, because I keep squirting them out and then leaving all the sides and then they eat all the side bits because I want the seeds. Uh, so it doesn't always go down that well. We've got some really nice ones though. Look, I mean, look at these. Absolutely, oh, absolutely beautiful tomatoes. What are they called? For the life of me, can't think of it now off the top of my head. And then down here is the crowning glory of my polytunnel this year. Me and my daughter, back in the spring, hand pollinated these peaches. So look at that, have you ever seen a more perfect peach? A little bit small maybe. really good. Anyway, sorry. Should talk in my mouth full. And I've let some of the tomato seedlings kind of grow up on the other side. There's acachoas coming up, you can see here. We always end up with some acachoas left in here. This is fun, good for a bit of seed saving, good for a bit of extra food in the autumn. Oh, those peaches are good. I'm actually walking around this it's early, I've not let the chickens out yet. Walking around in shorts and wellies. My legs absolutely soaked. Really dewy, it was like a thick fog this morning. It started to feel, dare I say it, like autumn's coming in. Which no one wants to admit, but I do quite like the autumn. Really lovely as well, the other day my daughter came in and she said, Dad, do you wanna see all the bees on your mint? And I love how much this flowers. Yeah, you should never plant it in the ground. But I put it outside the greenhouse because I used to have loads of nettles. Now I've got loads of mint. And I know which I'd love and my legs were brushing past each time I went in. Big patch of mint over there as well, actually. Go down and have a look in the orchard. So the autumn... Ah! Nettle. The autumn raspberries are just starting to kick in. These are the ones I probably hadn't pruned enough. I had to leave them to their own devices. This year I had this tabry here crop so heavily. And honestly, I planted this 10 years ago. Thought I killed it. Put the polytunnel poly plastic in and stuff a few years ago. The frame been here for a long time. Then all of a sudden, this year, it's fruited. And we've had bowlfuls and bowlfuls of tabry off this one. So I'm going to try and layer it, get some more off it. The orchard's looking pretty good got a lot of apples a lot of apples and I've thinned some fruit in some places the one tree it's not looking good it's this russet which is one of my favorites and for some reason all the leaves have gone off it I can't see anything wrong with the trunk so I'm just not sure why that's died and I guess sometimes they do uh, but a bit disappointing here we've got some discovery so these are ready to eat now on this little tree this is a replacement for a plum tree here and then further across got some pears and things that will be ready for a little bit Worcester will be the next one after that I should imagine won't be long till the Worcesters are ready love a Worcester apple fresh off the tree um, but a little bit mealy after a while but I do quite like them any early apple any early fruit I think is yeah you know, have the earliest and the latest fruit for me is a really big thing I like to extend the season as much as I can and another one that's been really good this year, so this could be a video of me walking around eating stuff, is Victoria Plums. So sweet. Mm. Honestly, I believe supermarket plums should be sold as a different fruit. You know, the ones that you import and they look all shiny. And you get tempted and you buy them and they're always disappointing. Compared to something like that, they're just completely different. Victoria Plum's always one of my favourites. Unfortunately a big branch broke off that tree, it was a lot taller before. 
it branched, oh, it broke, it branched, and none of the fruit was kind of viable off it, unfortunately. Got these, which are nearly ready, which are Merryweather damson. Not far off, I had one yesterday, actually. A little bit, till, still a little bit too sharp. I say damsons, they're like a damzine, they're like a cross, because they're free stone. They're a bit bigger than a damson as well. Really, really tasty, really nice. This chicken pen has become a bit of a bindweed corridor, but the chickens are pretty happy in there. Uh, I've got just some cockerels that I should have kind of got rid of quite a while ago, to be honest. Down in my kind of other, kind of more modern take on an orchard down here, my pear trees have all survived. They're all looking good. So I'm really pleased with all the young pear trees I planted as cordons really closely together. They're looking really healthy. And then the plum trees I planted four or five years ago, also looking really good. I mean, these are quite tall now. They're on dwarf stocks. Got some fruit that's nearly ready on a few of them. So not had much fruit from down here. So those plums are meant to be a later plum. So it's nice to spread the season in this way. This one as well. Very nearly ready. That was very rotten. The same down this row as well. A bit further apart because they're closer to the oak tree. So I know they're kind of competing with this big oak. Ooh, swing it round. But it seems to work. And down here, we've got our little hedgehog house that I built see that and that's that's had our rescue hedgehog in so it's nice and shady down here and he seems to be really happy because he's come back after you know rescued him cleaned all the maggots off him got him to a rescue center and now he's come back and I see him when I'm chucking the chickens in at night if I've left it a little bit too late and it's kind of dusky I will see him out and about and it's really lovely to see him kind of snuffling about the place I've given given him a bit of cat food and he seems quite happy with that uh, good quality stuff, obviously. Down here, my gooseberry hedge. Well, most of the gooseberries have survived. I've got one that hasn't, but it didn't actually come alive after I planted it. So, uh, not the end of the world, is it? let's be honest. Here, look at this plum tree. So I think this is marjoram seedlin. Look at this one. These are going to be beautiful when they're ready, ripe. They're just ever so slightly off it at the moment so I'm hoping they'll just kick in just after the Victorias have finished I have had one or two and these ones they the fruit clings to the stone actually um, yeah fruit clings to the stone so not quite as easy eating this one this was a really early one um, and it just had about three on it and I didn't get them something else had them which is disappointing and here we've got a gauge but it's not really a gauge you see up there so that was a seed limb um, from a yellow egg plum by mum and dad's, they had a plum tree. And I read somewhere that the seed limbs would grow true from a yellow egg plum. I can assure you they don't because they grow like a little green gauge in this case, just going reverting back to wild. Actually, really tasty little green gauge. So it's gonna stay. It's not, not the end of the world, it's a bit of an experiment. Admittedly, it took, <laughs> it's an experiment that took eight years to figure out what it was. That's as nice as any. That's as nice as any commercially grown plum. Mm. What a time of the year! All this abundance around us. Be doing a bit of preserving. Look at these ones as well. Hereford beefing. Meant to be a cooking apple. And they need to do a bit of growing yet before they get harvested. Hopefully. But really tasty one. They reckon they used to dry the whole apple in bread ovens, but I can't see quite how you do that, and then they powder it up. So it'd be something really great to experiment with, but just a lovely cooking apple, really lovely colour, really sharp taste as well. So when I can them, I can those separately uh, to my other cooking apples, and we use those generally for having with meat, because uh, they're so sharp and so acidic, but it just really, really works. Won't go up there, I don't think. But here we've got my, my fruit bushes, my black currants, and my gooseberries. They've been really good. Had a lot of them. 
could have had more. Uh, I think I've learned that with gooseberries, actually, you're probably better off to harvest a little underripe than over, because you're more likely to get them. And I found that they ripen really well off the bush, which is something not people people don't really talk about. So I think next year I'll be ripening them all off the bush. I harvested the load for a video uh, just to show my gooseberry scoops. Left them and they all ripened off the bush. So it was really kind of worked really well. This meadow has been gorgeous. Two acres, needs cutting really. But the wildflower, the noise of it, you know, it just it's just been really lovely. So we've got lots of grasshoppers, lots of wildlife, lots of birds. Same with the meadow at the bottom, the one acre one. Kind of just left it to its own devices. We did mow a patch the other day. We camped out, me and the kids and the wife. That was really lovely, just as something to do. Listen, if you can. So the coppice has been really cool because I've added something to it, which you've seen in other videos. So I've added the bees, but also this is the first year that the trees that I put down here, these are all ones I grafted myself, these apple trees, are fruiting really heavy. I've had to thin the fruit actually. That's kind of how well I've done. Also what I've got is a few clumps that I've put down here. Whoop. Japanese wine berries, which are so tasty. And they taste like the sound, like a slightly whiny raspberry. They grow really abundantly. You have to be careful they don't spread. But these have been down here seven or eight years. I've got a clump there, not huge, and a tiny little clump there. So I wouldn't say they're invasive here. They are in some places, so just kind of watch where you put them. I know in America they're a big problem in some states in America. Look at the colour of these apples. So this is Red Windsor. And I'm really pleased with this one. I just can't wait to try them. Uh, one of my best friend's favorite apples, so she says. Yeah, and these ones have been thinned. And then here, we've got my bees. Or our bees, as the girls seem to have definitely adopted them. See some comings and goings. It's got these two hives here with bees in and they can sound, hear the sound of them, they sound really happy. And then we've got some polyhives there, which haven't got anything at the moment, but they're ready to go. But obviously it's the wrong time of year now, so next year if I decide to do any splits or anything like that, I'm good to go. So that would be cool, try and up it. The girls have already set sights on, they want nine hives, they've told me, they want three each, one for me, three for me, three for each of them. <laughs> so we'll see if we get to that next year. With them pushing me, no doubt we will. The willow looks as healthy as it always does. Just kind of grows without much effort. Looks like a bit like a bamboo forest, I always think. Down here, loads, loads of yellow rat gone to seed, lots of wild flowers. And the willow for next year's cut, looking really good as well. And actually I've been using the, the bits I cut off for withies. Now it's all dried off. I've been using it in the garden quite a bit. And then the hedge we planted, four years ago. It's got loads of fruit in it because I put in damsons or bullises every seven meters. That's a bullis there. I imagine it's going to be really sharp, really tasty. I think that's shepherd's purse, that one. And there's some plums as well down here. Another damson there. But I'm really pleased with this hedge because when we put it in, you know, best part of 500 trees, I think we have one die which I thought was pretty amazing. But also the fact that it's all taller than me. It's not long in giving us that privacy that we wanted from the footpath. But also, like, it's going to be a lovely way to produce a bit more fruit. Look at all the damsons on here. Well, they... Everything's quite... Oh, sharp. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Wow, oh, it's like eating the slow. Oh. Turn my mouth inside out. I'm sure there's some earlier ones up here if I find them. Oh yeah, that's ready. 
different flavour with a damson. Try not to eat the little maggot. And one thing I did which I was really pleased with was I put in, when I planted this hedge, I knew it was going to get blackberries, well, brambles. So I put in commercial varieties of blackberry. Oh, the flavour of them. So what it's given me is some really big blackberries along this hedge. It's on the footpath, other people are going to pick it. My goodness, they are good. And I've put in some more actually, so kind of layer them down and keep them going. Hmm, and merry weather there. Like I say, it's one of my favourites, so I put it kind of everywhere I could. This one's meant to be a, a plum for drying, a French plum. So much so it's dried on the tree. Hmm. Like raisiny consistency. That's cool. So you can leave them to dry on the tree. That, squeeze the stone out. That's the tour of it at the moment. Really heavy on fruit. Really low on veg. No cereals. Self-sufficiency rise, it's pretty poor. But it's been, as always, a lovely place to live. Uh, I want to kind of up my self-sufficiency. I'd say I want to do a year's self-sufficiency at some point. I'm going to need animals for that. And I'm going to need to cultivate a bit more land. But at the moment, it's just nice to have things ticking along, especially the fruit, which takes years and years to kind of get established. And it feels like now just getting there, turning that corner and having all these tasty things ready at the right times of year, you know, with soft fruit, uh, with raspberries, tabries and gooseberries, and then with, you know, all the top fruit as well. So with the plums and things like that, it just feels really, really like getting on top of the fruit and just keeping it working really, planting a bit more every year as well, keep the kind of cycle going, young trees and old trees, trying new things, just works really good. But yeah, thanks for watching, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.